sustained us for his mercies the word of God said they're brand new every morning oh only by the grace of God are we here today only by your grace Lord are we able to stand and lift up hands to heaven to glorify your name to thank you for redemption's work we thank you today hallelujah let's sing that part again praise God praise, praise God, God. Oh, come on, church, let's sing it. Let's sing it this morning. Praise God. Father, we praise you. We glorify you today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, you were willing to go to the cross for us. Thank you, Lord, as you paid that debt truly you did not owe. Oh, but you became the propitiation for our sins, the substitute, the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. We praise you today, Father. We love you, Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you're seated this morning, won't you turn to somebody and just remind them, said he did it for you and he did it for me. Hallelujah. Oh, he did it for you and he did it for me. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, had it not been for grace, had it not been for grace, Oh, so thankful, so thankful for His love, His mercy. Several years back, I had an unusual dream. I was scheduled to preach a camp, and uh, weeks up until preaching that camp, one night I had this dream, and in the dream, I was standing behind the pulpit getting ready to preach, and there was two people sitting in the pews in a large auditorium. And as I had stood there, and I remember in that dream looking at those notes and getting ready to prepare, but the only thing that I could begin to say, as I said, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And Brother Hemphill, in my dream, I would say that again. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. And the more I said it, the, the more authority it just welled up inside of me like a well. And that was the only thing in that dream that I began to preach. But as I began to declare that, where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. There were scores of people that began to come into that auditorium. 
And all they could do was lift their hands and began to repent before God and say, Lord, here am I, a sinner, but I'm so glad that grace abounds. And in that dream, the power of God began to move in that house. Can I tell you this morning, you don't have to have three point, points in a poem. You don't have to be polished and eloquent. But can I still remind the church, no matter how long you've been saved or how long you feel like you've been in this thing or if you're brand new in it, I'm glad to report today that still where sin abounds and it abounds today but grace much more abounds amen aren't you thankful aren't you thankful amen the message remains the same the power of God oh can change and transform lives and I'm so thankful so thankful for that power today Hallelujah. I want to share with you this morning some prayer requests, some needs we want to make mention of, folks that we've been praying for, and just a few updates as well uh, for the church. Uh, the Hoffman family, let's continue to remember Willie Hoffman with the lung cancer, chemotherapy treatments, blood clots in his legs, him and Sister Margaret today. In need of prayer, Sister Burnett, let's continue to remember this infection she's fighting, has been fighting in her body. We'd also like for you to continue to remember Sister Sanja in your prayers. Brother Roderick this morning had said uh, to let the church know we, that they appreciate those prayers. There is improvement, but still, let's continue to lift up Sister Sanja before the Lord. Complete healing in her body. Uh, Sister Jean St. Clergy. Uh, just as a reminder, we've been praying for her back, her legs. She has had tremendous amounts of pain. She has as well, uh, they had uh, done some tests this last week. Uh, she has, uh, what is that, Sister Chambly, L3 and L... All right, so the L4 is broke. And then visiting the surgeon tomorrow. So let's be praying for her. I know that with some medication, I also, a back brace, things of that nature to try to help and alleviate some of this pain. But Sister Jean is in need of our prayers. Let's also continue to remember Sister uh, Owens uh, here this week on uh, uh, Friday. She had had a uh, follow-up uh, procedure with her doctor, and uh, she is recovering at home. She had messaged me this morning, said she is doing well, just some recovery time. But uh, encourage the church to continue to remember Sister Owens in your prayer. Uh, also, Sister Gwen uh, had this biopsy from this p uh, place on her nose. Uh, it did come back uh, as a cancerous spot. And so here at the end of July, she is scheduled to uh, have this removed um, with her dermatologist. They'll be doing a skin graft. But uh, we do want to remember Sister Gwen, just believe, and I believe even the Lord can just clear it all up before she ever has to have surgery. And so let's be remembering Sister Gwen. Also, uh, we have been praying for Kim, Sister Karen's daughter, and let's continue to lift her up, rest in her body, rest in her mind, uh, needing strength, uh, just all the way around, mind, emotions, body. Let's remember Kim and let's be praying. Sister Karen shared with us they ruled out the tumor that they were concerned about. So we're thankful for that. But let's continue to remember this family. We also want to continue to remember Sister Kathy McClendon. Let's continue to lift her up in prayer. She is at home. Sister, uh, Sister Carmen, any updates there on, on mom this morning? All right. They are looking at, uh, they had uh, made some considerations in regards to the medication they had her on of uh, thinking that this might be cause of some of the side effects from that, some of the problem. But let's be praying uh, for Sister Kathy. Phyllis Tibdo, uh, Sister Dye's sister-in-law, she has some liver problems and asking uh, prayer for the need represented there in her body. And so let's be remembering this need today. Uh, this niece, Amy, as well, we've been praying for with uh, melanoma. 
uh, in the, and had surgery on, on one eye. Sister Bambi's in the back. I don't, I don't know if I'm telling that right. Uh, Brother Gerard's at the doors. But uh, she, they are concerned because it looks like some of this is spreading maybe to the breast. And so they are further looking uh, at the needs represented there. And so let's remember Amy uh, in our prayer and uh, continue to uh, lift these up here before the Lord. And uh, we just appreciate you being faithful to remember these needs. We've been mentioning Skye, uh, this young lady with the thyroid, uh, that she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer that had, uh, she went in for surgery to have that uh, taken care of, but has been back for further tests. Any news? All right. All right. Yes, Sister Clendenin as well. Let's continue to remember her in prayer. Sister Phyllis this morning, not feeling good. She was feeling rough last night, again this morning. So let's be remembering her in prayer and, uh, and uh, lifting these before the Lord. And as Sister Shannon said, sky with their uh, supposed to go back for results of this further biopsy. So we do want to remember these. I know that there are different ones today uh, who stand in need of uh, prayer, different ones that are upon your hearts, folks that we've been calling before the Lord, believing for God to minister and move in their lives. How many of you today would say you have a lost loved one you're praying for? Somebody you're believing that God would touch, save, deal we want to remember today uh, these requests also uh, seeing sister Courtney reminds me her uh, roommate who's been battling with cancer as well and uh, we want to remember this need and there's many many needs there's big situations but aren't you glad we serve a big God a God who is able amen a God who can heal a God who can deliver and uh, we're so thankful Amen for his faithfulness. Can we stand together once more? And we want to take these needs before the Lord in prayer today. Also remembering Brother Hector. Brother Hector has for uh, some time now having some pain in his shoulder, his elbow, some, a lot of tenderness. And so remembering Brother Hector as well in his body. And we do want to remember this uh, this, this morning as well. Yes, ma'am. Oh. All right. So we've been praying for Sister Goodman and been believing. We're thankful. Glad you're here this morning, Sister. And uh, we're thankful the Lord's been helping. And just that you can be in God's house today. That's good. That's good, but let's continue to pray and remember, remember these. Amen. Amen. With a signified hand, how many of you just an unspoken request today? Something upon your heart, believe in God to do. Amen. We've seen that chorus many times and it says, My God can do anything, anything, anything. My God can do anything. Amen. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? I was early this morning. I, I, I had come across this where the scripture reminds us. He said, you have not because you ask not. And he went on to say, he said, because when you ask, you ask amiss. And something that God had challenged me with in regards is, is, is when we pray, when we make our petitions known, if we're not careful, it can be something that has just become routine. And I, my heart is, God, am I serious with you when I pray? Am I serious with you? Sometimes we can feel like we're slighted or disgruntled because maybe God's not working or it doesn't seem like He's moving or answering a prayer the way that we had hoped that He would or whatever the case might be. But the truth is, the challenge, I believe, to the church is, does, does God know what it means to you? Does He know what it means to you? I can't help but think of Hannah 
The scripture says that she went up to the temple to go and worship with her husband. And she was barren. And the word of God said that when she got there in that temple, her heart is said that she poured out her heart, her soul before the Lord. She prayed in such a way that Brother Tobin, that, that priest, the man of God, he looked and he, he accused her of being drunk. He said, you don't need to come into God's house like that. And she said, no, 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 you don't understand. She said, I'm pouring out my soul. What was she doing? She said, I'm serious. I'm serious with God. And so this morning, I pray, our heart is, Lord, let me be serious with you. Let, Lord, you know the seriousness of my request. You know the burden of my soul. Can we lift our hands together? Can we just pray? Can we believe the Lord? Can we believe the Lord this morning? Oh, Father, so many are the needs. So many today are the requests. Situations that seem so monumental and, and uh, overwhelming. Situations, Lord, needs, burdens that are very heavy. Your word reminds us that you give rest to those who are burdened. You give rest to those that are weary. And Lord, today we come and we lay these things at your feet. We're trusting you today, Lord to do the work that only you can do. Provide the healing that only you can provide. Restoration and renewal. Lord, you're greater than disease. You're greater than pain. You're greater than our problems. Lord, today we're asking that you would move and touch. We're believing God for you to bring healing to those today who need your upon them. Sister St. Clergy, Sister Owens, the Hoffman family, Sister Sanja. Lord, today we pray that you would minister to Sister Goodman this morning, the needs represented in her life. Sister Kathy McClendon. Lord, you see so many who today need your strength, need your help. We're believing you, Father. We're believing you, Father. Lord, these that are battling cancer. Sister Gwen today, this place. Lord, on her nose, we're asking God healing. Lord, minister and move through by your power. Sister Clinton today. Sister Phyllis. Oh, my God, you can do anything. Unspoken requests. Lost loved ones today. Convict hearts. Convict hearts by your spirit. Sister Goodman, if some of you would just go and right there where Sister Goodman is, some of you begin to pray for Sister Goodman. I'm going to ask some of you ladies over here to come and lay hands on Sister Gwen. We're going to believe the Lord to touch her in body this morning. Touch and heal the need represented in her life today. Amen. Some of you gather around there as well. Let's pray. Let's agree. Lord, we thank you this morning, every need, every request. Lord, these ladies today that stand in need, Father, we ask God that you would touch. I pray, Lord, that skin cancer be dry, be removed. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, healing virtue.
Praise the Lord. Can the church say amen? Let's do that again. Can the church say amen? Oh, let it be so. Let it be so. We believe in you, Lord Jesus. You can be seated. God bless you. Thank you for praying. Thank you for praying. Amen. I encourage you. I encourage you. As a church body, take it upon yourself. Don't wait to be asked. Don't wait to be begged or prodded or to be to, for someone to plead with you. Pick up the phone. Call some of these folks. Check in on them. Amen. It's just, just sometimes as you hear me say, just to let somebody know you're praying for them. I know Sister St. Clergy, uh, not only uh, uh, your prayers, but I know that uh, there's some days, of course, uh, Sister Debbie and Brother Jay, they work and there's some days that she uh, could use some, just, just some company at the house, somebody who could sit uh, to help. She told me, she said, Brother Jake, nobody got to come clean my house. I got a housekeeper. I got those kinds of things. But sometimes just to, just to help in, in these areas, uh, I, know that, uh, I know that's a blessing. Sister, uh, we've mentioned Sister Clinton and uh, picking up the phone, calling, checking in. Sister Owens, the, the list goes on and on and on. Sister Sanja, just so many. Call, reach out to somebody. If there's a way, a place that you think you could serve and help in those areas, do so. And uh, I know it'll be a blessing. But uh, anyway, we appreciate you remembering so many of these and lifting, lifting these needs before the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite our ushers this morning to come give us an opportunity to worship in our giving. This is Mission Sunday, and here shortly the kids uh, are going to come, and uh, they are going to uh, take part as well in this Mission Sunday. But we will be having the ushers to come one more time to receive of the missions offering. We always encourage and remind the church to be prayerfully considering what the Lord would lay upon your heart in regards to missions. Sister Haley will be coming here in just a little bit to be sharing about the missions project that the kids are involved in right now, what they're collecting change for. Now let me say this, as, uh, as we get ready to move forward in the service, and the kids will be coming out with their little barrels and you're going to say they have their change and everything. And if you're here and you'd say, oh, Brother Jake, I forgot my change. Well, guess what? That green stuff fits in that barrel just as well. Them dollar bills. Well, Brother Jake, I don't have a dollar bill. Well, if you have a checkbook, you can fold a check up. And you, it slips down in there real nice. Amen. And so... Uh, I remember one Sunday, Ashlyn, she had her little, her little barrel, and, uh, and I had wrote out a check for X amount of dollars, and I stuck it inside of her little barrel, and uh, she, had, she didn't know I had done that. She grabbed her little barrel uh, one particular Sunday, and she said, Dad, she said, would you help me? I need some change in here. I said, well, sis, I've put some, I wrote a check. I put, uh, there's money in there. And she shook it and she said, there ain't nothing in here. That's just a piece of paper in there, Dad. I said, well, that paper represents something. But anyhow, uh, so this morning we're looking forward to the kids being a part. You're going to hear about what they're doing and all those things. But we do pray in this time of tithe and offering. May the Lord bless you. We pray as and always that God just open the windows of heaven in your life as you find yourself obedient and uh, yielding, amen, to the will of God and His Word in your life in regards, amen, to what He has put in our hands and made us stewards of. And we pray the Lord bless you today. Brother Josh Price, if you would, would you pray over this offering this morning?
Hallelujah. How many of you would clap your hands and say, I trust him today? Oh, I trust him today. Amen. There's two things that the Word of God, these immutable truths that are presented. God cannot lie and God cannot fail. He can be trusted. Amen. Trust Him with your life. Trust Him with what you have. Trust Him with all of what your plans and purposes might be. You can trust Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, ushers, if you would come one more time this morning. And as we receive this missions offering today, uh, we do pray that God would bless. We're so thankful for the opportunity to give as unto the Lord in, in accordance to the furtherance of the gospel. Amen. Being at work around the world, even here at home, and uh, we pray the Lord bless. Let's pray together. Father, bless, bless this mission's offering today. I pray, Lord, you would meet the needs that are represented in the various ministries. Oh, God, in regards to the furtherance of the gospel, the kingdom of God, I pray that you would meet every need. Bless the gift, the giver alike today. And we thank you for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As the gentlemen come this morning to receive of the offering, I'm going to uh, have Sister, uh, there she is. I'm going to have Sister Haley. She's going to come, and she is going to share with you what VT Kids is involved with. And uh, you're going to see them all here in just a minute. But uh, I, I want this, this group of kids, won't you kiddos, would you stand up for Brother Jake for a second? Turn around, turn around and just wave at the church. Isn't that a good looking group of kids right there? Amen. Good looking group. We're, we're missing some. We've got Jason, Max, and Jordy. They are they're out of town and different ones that can't be with us. Y'all can be seated for just a moment. And, uh, but we're thankful. Our kids church, we got a group that's growing. Our Wednesday nights are growing. I know Morgan and... and uh, uh, Preston, wait, Peyton, Preston's the oldest, Peyton, they're out of town as well, but uh, we are uh, thankful for all of these, uh, these kiddos and, uh, and the work that they're doing. Uh, Sister Haley can tell you a little bit more about this, but in the foyer, there is right on this first entry table, just before you come to the sanctuary, there is a clear box and that box is out there, and it is, it is in regards to the kids' missions uh, offering. And throughout the month, any day, you coming in, you got some spare change, put, put it in there. And, uh, uh, and, and make that contribution, and it helps to build this. But um, Sister Haley's going to come and let you know what uh, the kids are involved in here for this uh, this month and I believe next month but sister Haley share well we have an excited group of kiddos this morning they are so excited that they're gonna get to sing for y'all they've come in the past several weeks and said is this the morning we get to sing and so this morning I finally got to tell them this is the morning you get to sing to everyone um, but first of all I just want to thank you all for um, Sending your kiddos back there and just trusting all of us. We have a great group of ladies that are back there helping. Sister Shannon, Sister Hope, Sister Kelly, Sister Amy, is, um, she helps in the back. Um, we have nursery workers, Sister Bambi, uh, my mom, Sister Tracy that has stepped up helping in the nursery. Sister Sheila has helped in the back. She's been back there with us. And um, it's just a, a great, great group of ladies. But these kiddos are wonderful. And... Um, just to be able to pour Christ into them. That is the goal. That is what we're back there doing. We're not back there just to play and to babysit and to entertain, but it is an opportunity in a small time frame in their lives that we get to implement and plant seeds of Christ in their lives that we hope one day God will begin to water and that they will grow and be fruitful in their lives. And this project is a part of that. And um, we're calling this project Changing the World for Jesus. So every month you will see us out here 
and the kiddos are collecting change. They have barrels that they have taken home, and they're collecting change through the month, and they're bringing them back. And then on the Sundays that we're out here, we're going to come and kind of shake y'all down for your change too. And then the, all the change, all that we gather, is going to go towards a different project for each quarter. Now, in that quarter, we may choose one project individually or a project that is global and local because we don't only want to focus um, globally. We want them to know that there's needs afar and close to home, you know, that they do go to school with children who have very, very serious needs in their lives. You know, we want to make them aware of what is going on. And so um, we're going to be talking to them with, about each project, about what's going on, and teaching them about missions. And so um, this month and next month, we're going to be um, giving to Brother Danny Sweeney's um, God's Little Ones, which is in Honduras. And I reached out to Brother Danny and just said, hey, Brother Danny, I'm, you know, we're, we're doing this project. We're looking to, you know, support different ones. And I wanted to just touch base with you and see, does the ministry have any need right now? What do, what do y'all have going on? And he said because of COVID, Honduras has been affected um, in several different ways. But they've really just been shut down. You know, for us, shut down was one thing. But for them, it's been a totally on a whole new level you know we can still go to Walmart and get what we need but they have not been able to get food supplies oil you know they have been um, in dire dire need there so he said that um, he was trying to get a, a crate a shipping crate to go over um, to be able to send down to Honduras to the pastors there and Originally, it had looked like nothing was going to be able to go in. They were letting nothing come in. He said, but God made the way and worked it out. And so they now have a shipping crate that is going to be able to be shipped off June 25th. So today's amount that is given is going to go directly towards that shipping crate. And they're buying things like oil, beans, seed, because they have um, a field there at the Glow Center that they plant and they work. And so um, he's going to be purchasing all of those things to send over in that crate. So today's um, will go directly towards that shipping crate for June 25th. Um, and then we will give again next month in July. We will give to the Glow Center. And then come August, we will do a local back-to-school project with the kids because it's going to be time where parents locally are trying to find uh, school supplies and, you know, scrounge up the money. There are, um, that's a big need here in the community. So we will be uh, partnering with Brother Chris and um, the whole church will get involved in that. Um, so today's goes directly to that shipping crate. And um, as the kiddos come by, anything that you give, if you give an amount that you would like to be credited for, you can put the money in, but then grab a white envelope and just fill it out and where it's where it has the line for what you can say it's for just put children's missions and mark it as cash and the amount that you gave so that sister shannon can credit you for that if you if it's an amount that you want to be credited for so i know there was some that have asked can i get credit for this yes you can just fill out an envelope turn it in the offering and sister shannon can give you that okay and then um the barrel, we've got the barrel in the back, and we're going to let these kiddos get up here and sing to y'all, and then we're going to come by and um, take up this offering. Thank y'all very, very much.
All right. Some, somebody say this with me. Say, it's a shakedown. It, it, is a, it is a shakedown for a good cause. Amen. And so we're going to turn these kids loose. And uh, you, you give to them and be a blessing this morning. kiddos and as well our children's church workers another hand of appreciation oh what a blessing amen i've got a feeling they're gonna they're gonna do well this morning we appreciate your participation and and uh, i know that these kids are excited they've been excited right about the time we were getting ready to start this everything had shut down because of the coronavirus but they have been chomping at the bit and uh, as a matter of fact here uh, in the near future, we actually are uh, getting a replacement part for the projector, but we will have uh, Sister Haley as well has a video uh, compilation of projects that the kids were doing during the coronavirus, whether it was quoting scripture, singing songs, different things that they had done in their group through the uh, through uh, the internet and recording and things of that nature and so uh, we'll be sharing that as well but we love these kids and uh, just so thankful that they get to be a part amen of this and want to see this grow and do well and uh, and we appreciate your participation and uh, prayerful consideration amen and so when you when you look at change now when you look at change in uh, that's handed back to you or whatever the case might be, think about these kids and their uh, barrels and what they're doing and uh, let that be a challenge to you. Amen. But we appreciate so very much. Here uh, a little bit later in the service, uh, I do ask you not to uh, head out too quickly uh, after, after altar service this morning. We do have a, uh, a couple of announcements that we want to make. I will say this first, uh, that uh, we, will, uh, we will be having a business meeting on June the 28th. June the 28th, uh, by way of Constitution and Bylaws, we'll be making two uh, full Sunday announcements. 
uh, but I'm encouraging you, please stay with us after the service, be sharing exactly what we'll be doing uh, in that uh, business meeting. So anyway, I do want to make you aware of that, so please uh, just hang tight for a little bit. And we'll be sharing some more in regards to that. But want to get into the word of the Lord this morning. If you have your Bible, the book of Exodus chapter number 10. The book of Exodus chapter number 10. And we're going to look at verse number 24. We're going to read verses 24 through 26. And see what the Lord would have to say to us this morning. Amen. Exodus chapter 10 verses 24 through 26. When you come to your place in Scripture, I'm going to ask you to stand once more for the reading of God's Word this morning. And so thankful for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Exodus 10, verse 24. If you're there with me, won't you say amen? amen. The Bible says, And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go, go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must also, or give us also, sacrifices and burnt offerings. That we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not an hoof be left behind. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. In this we find as to where, if you want to put it this way, negotiations are in process between Moses and Pharaoh. Plagues have hit Egypt There's times we know the story that Pharaoh is ready to get them out of there. But the Lord would harden his heart, change his mind. Another plague would come. And we find that this is the case. And we see this conversation between Pharaoh and Moses. And Pharaoh in this is saying, go ahead and get out of here. I want you to leave Egypt. Said, as a matter of fact, you can take your little ones, take the children with you, take all this, get on out of here. But he says this. He says, only let your herds be stayed. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? And Moses goes on to say, as we read here, he said, no, you don't understand. He said, we're taking everything with us. Our cattle, our flocks, our herds. He said, because when we go into that wilderness, he said, we've got to make sacrifice unto the Lord. We're going to go and we're going to worship, and we don't know of all of what he's going to require of us, but we're taking it all with us. And can I say this morning that there are some things in our lives that Satan... He will say, you can do this, I don't care if you do that, I don't care about any of these things, but only let this stay behind. I'll let you do, you can go, whatever you want to do, but this, let's leave it here in Egypt. This morning, if I can, for the few moments, and with the Lord's help, I just want to preach on the thought, Satan is after your sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Satan is after your sacrifice. Won't you look at your neighbor and tell him, get ready. He's after your sacrifice. Satan is after your sacrifice. Can we pray together? Father, I pray this morning that you would bless your word, anoint 
I thank you for every heart and life this morning. Challenge us, Lord. Speak to us, I pray. I ask God, give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, my mind and lips to preach, as would bring you glory and honor. Meet us in these altars and help us today, oh, to recognize, Lord, that you have called and commissioned us that everything goes to you. And Father, truly, we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen and Amen. You can be seated. Satan is after your sacrifice. We understand, according to the Word of God, that Egypt has always been a type of the world, a symbolism and type of foreshadowing of the world and of sin. Pharaoh as well, that cruel taskmaster, that symbolism in regards to Satan. Satan, that cruel taskmaster, the one as to who will burden, the one as to who will afflict God's people. We understand this morning, you don't need me to go down the trails of talking about what the devil will do, how he will torment, what he will try to execute in your life. We understand this morning as the church that truly the enemy has an agenda. And that agenda, Christ exposed that agenda. And uh, some would say, well, it's got to be a whole lot more meticulous than all of this. But Jesus reminded the people, he said, this is what it hinges upon. Stealing, killing, and destroying. That's what Satan specializes in. That's what he wants to do. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He is the Word of God has reminded us that He is the Father of all lies. He has given birth to, He is the Father of lies and rebellion. Understand, in any way that Satan can, he will look to oppress the people of God. We find that we are in a day and a time in our lives as to where, sadly, even within the church, as to where we can come into God's house. We can make our appearances. We can sing our songs. We can listen to the preaching. We can give our offerings. But the truth is, is that there are many of us that are embattled with things in our lives. Situations as to where there are torments. There are hellish things that are hidden in the heart of men. There are sins that are secret. There are conditions of the heart and the mind that for a couple of hours on a given Sunday in a service that we will uh, try to live with those things being held hostage as to those things being controlled if you will by our desires by the temptation by the snares that are there set before us there are things as to where we I believe have reached a point to think that there are just some things pastor that we just got to live with. There's just some things that we've just got to deal with. There are some things, Brother Jake, that you don't understand have been a, a something a part of uh, uh, my life, a part of my existence, a part of my mind, a part of my emotions, a part of my attitude, a part of my heart. I mean, the list can go on and on and on, and, and this is just how it's been. There are people that sadly, we are in the place where the power of God, the Spirit of God, the blood of Jesus, amen, the power of the Holy Ghost can come and deliver and set free and eradicate sin and deliver and turn lives around, but yet we come and we're handcuffed spiritually and we're setting lackadaisically in our minds and in our spirits thinking as to where we have set at a bargaining table with Satan himself and he would say, I don't mind if you do A, B, and C. I don't mind if you take part in this or that. I don't care if you are a part of formality, function, or religious practice. Come on, somebody. Hear what I'm trying to say. The devil could care less that you got in the car, got yourself dressed, and came and parked yourself on a padded pew on this Sunday morning. He don't mind that. But I'll tell you what will get hell upset. I'll tell you what will cause an 
anxiety attack in Satan's mind is when there are a people who would come to say we're not here for church as usual. We're not here for just another sermon. We're not here just to go through the form and function of singing our songs and doing our religious duties and checking off the checklist that I did this and that but I will tell somebody there are some that are standing on the cusp of eternity on the cusp of heaven and hell deliverance or destruction but there's got to be some folks that are willing to draw the line in the sand and who would say I have come to let God do a full work in my life and I will not settle for anything less can somebody say amen Oh, when we are willing to leave some things in Egypt, when we are willing to leave some things undealt with, when we are willing to leave some things unchecked, when we buy into the lie that there are certain things that we can possess and certain ways that we can live, but other places of my life are off limits and I just can't seem to muster the strength, the faith, or the help to get there, I will tell you that is a lie from the pit of hell. I want to remind somebody is that enemy will only have the power that you will give to him as we stand around and say well I just can't or God won't or he's not able but I'm here to remind the church today that we serve a God who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think and you don't have to be stuck in Egypt you ain't got to be there we need some folks who one more time when we're on our way out of Egypt who's willing to kiss Egypt goodbye (laughs) test one two come on somebody we need some folks who's going to pucker up buttercup and give Egypt a goodbye kiss and say I'm not coming back I'm not leaving anything there understand Moses had that revelation and the word from the Lord when he said when Pharaoh said get on out of here you can leave take the kids do whatever you want but you notice he said only let only let this one piece stay now I want you to notice something to some who might have been at the negotiation with Moses and between Pharaoh some would have probably nudged brother Moses brother Craig and said hey brother Moses that's the best deal we've had all week that's the best we've ever heard we ought to take it and get on out of here we ought to take it and skedaddle but Moses had the revelation and the mindset to say no you don't understand is that when God said we're all getting out of here and everything's going to go out with us that we can leave no room for anything to remain to some it would have seemed like something insignificant but church you must remember if Satan's got a hold even on the small things in our lives it will bring destruction he will have you all he needs is a little bit of space to do a work hear me all he needs is a little bit of space well it's just the cows it's just the sheep it's just the flocks the herds he's giving us our kids he's letting us go out of here they're going to throw their jewelry at us they're going to give us silver and gold they're going to give us fine raiment we're going to have what we need but I'm glad to look at God's word and know there was a man of God that God had appointed and said no no Pharaoh here's what you don't understand there's not one hoof we're not going to have one cow we're not going to have one donkey we're not going to have one goat we ain't going to have anything left here in Egypt we're cutting ties with this
this place. You might think it's insignificant, but these sacrifices are going with us because we're going in the wilderness to worship. We're going in the wilderness to seek God's face. We're going into the wilderness and we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Understand, Satan, if we allow him, he just wants a little piece here and a little piece there. Notice the terminology only. I'm just asking this. I want to say to the church this morning, there's three quick things that I want to mention. I want you to understand that Satan is after the sacrifice of Christ in your life. You say, Brother Jake, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. What would you be talking about? Let me remind you, Victory Temple, of this fact and what we have to safeguard. The problem is we have a world full of problem, full of sin, humanity that will not heal itself. Man in himself is evil. Man in himself is full of sin. I know there are modern day minds and those who would tell you you are your own God. There are those who will preach to you about uh, self-motivation. And you can be better. Your best life now. Come on. And they will sell a gazillion books and DVDs promoting that message. But Brother Torbert, I don't care how sophisticated, how much science is behind it. I don't care how polished it is. I'm here to tell you unless the grace of God, the power of God, the healing, cleansing blood of Jesus is at work in the life of humanity, we are hopeless as a people. We can't do it in ourselves. Therefore, I want the church to understand this might seem so uh, something that you'd say, we get this, Brother Jake, but the problem is I'm afraid the church really don't get it. Because what happens is, is we have allowed Satan to grab a hold of the sacrifice of Christ in our lives. What do you mean? Let me explain. We are finding where we have more problem than we've ever had, but the church has less power than we've ever experienced. We've got more sin on our pews. We can't just preach about those out the door. Let me tell you the old saints used to say it's not my brother it's not my sister but it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer it was a recognition of the fact I am a sinner I am a man who was bound by this flesh and I need the power of God that would quicken my spirit I need the Holy Ghost to convict me I still need an altar that I can die on. But we've reached a point within the church. Let's sing away our problems. I'm not against singing. I love singing. I don't sing well. I think I'm a professional in the shower. I just open up and let her fly. Amen. Amen. I ain't worried about it. But some would say if we can have enough. Listen, here's what I'm saying. Only. We've seen little only changes. And what it is is a ploy of the enemy of our soul to pull Christ out of the church. To pull Christ out of our lives. Well, if only we'll change this. And if only we'll do that. If only we have come to a point where I have seen firsthand. I've been in the services where they will sing an hour and a half. And they only want the man of God to stand in the pulpit and preach for 15 minutes before somebody's upset because Shoney's is going to shut down and they're not going to get there in time to pull up to the table. We are in a place to where we offer programs to our teenagers and our children and they do not have power. 
power. It's sad, but Satan has meticulously pulled and separated generations out of God's house and have estranged them from one another. And we've got babies that have no idea about the power of an altar call, about the power of God's Spirit at work. Understand today, we as a church need to recognize that power for the church in this day and hour is still found at a place called Mount Calvary. It's still at the hill of Golgotha. It still takes the blood of the Lamb. Silver tongue orators of our day in their interviews will say things like, well, there's many ways to heaven. No, there's not. There's not. You came from a culture, Brother Udi. How many, how many Hindu gods? Thousands. 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 And if I'm right, if there's something you want to make a god, you just make it a god. You can. Saw a story about a Hindu man who did not work. He was supplied by alms of people they would give to him. But to worship his God, he would roll on his side and his belly everywhere he went. He had bandages and scrapes and scuffs, his hair all matted, looked like a wild man, a madman, had, had paintings on his face. And in the interviews, they would say, what are you doing? And he was worshiping his God. He was giving his life to rolling around like a beast on the ground, thinking that's what it was. Let me tell you something. There are generations who need to know. They would say, well, that's a narrow-minded way. That is, that is a view that is, that is too straightforward. Forward. You can't tell that to people. Yes, I can in the sense that I don't want anybody going to hell. And I will still preach the cross of Calvary that straight is a gate, narrow is the way. Understand it still takes the blood. We sing it around here. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Can I tell you today is that if there's sin problems, if there's addictions, if there's things in your mind and your heart, heart. Brother Jake can't rub your head. I can't blow on you. I can't hit you with a hanky a few times and push you over and everything's still good. I can't meet you in the aisle and shake your hand and your sin be gone. But I'm telling you I know a man I know a man who can I know a Christ Some would say, baptize them this way. Shake the preacher's hand. Put their name on the membership roll. Daddy Sweeney used to say, you might as well shake the donkey's tail and scribble your name on the barn door. Come on here. It's because it has the same effect. But we have done everything. I remember a sister in the church she said, Brother Jake, I went to go visit my childhood church. She was out of town with the, her sister, and they was out visiting family. And she said, we pulled up that old church. And she said, when I was a girl, she said, that place was filled with the power of God. That's where she was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And she said she got there and noticed that they changed up the church sign. It was still a quote-unquote uh, Pentecostal denomination. And they got in there and the pastor was there. She had knocked on the front door and he came and she said, I, she introduced herself. She said, I just wanted to come and just kind of walk down memory lane. If you do you care, if you can show me, the, show me the church. He said, yeah, come on in. And she said, she began to talk with that preacher. And she said, when I was a little girl, she said, she was walking through the building. She said, when I was a little girl, I remember right over here. She said, I remember my daddy shaking under the power of the Holy Ghost. I remember in this pew over here was sister so-and-so. And said, the Spirit of God would begin to move and said she'd be one of the first ones to tell you that God was moving amen with her worship she said this place over here in the altar is where I was standing the night God filled me with the Holy Ghost and she said Jacob she said my heart sank she said because that pastor looked at me like I was speaking a foreign language like he had no clue what was going on and said she, he was showing said oh we've bought this and we've done that and we painted this and we did that and she said she looked at the back wall and 
And she said on that back wall was some type of apparatus, some type of piece of art. She said, I didn't know what it was. And she said, oh, she said, I remember that we used to have a big, beautiful cross that was up there. And he said, well, he said, if you look at that long enough, he said, it's abstract art. He said, look at it long enough. He said, it's supposed to look like a cross. She said, Brother Jake, she said, I'm not trying to be judgmental. She said, but I stood there and I looked every which way I could. She said, I didn't see it was a, it was a cross. She said, it looked like just a mangled bunch of, 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 of stuff up there. And he said, he said, you know, he said, he said, we've changed some things out. And he said this, he said, so things aren't as offensive So things are more palatable. Come on, somebody. So some things are more aesthetically pleasing. Come on here. Let me tell you something. I ain't got time to talk about all of my opinions in regards to some of the changes in the church. But I will say this. I will say is that it is a sad day. I know that that was just a symbol on the wall. That cross right there is beautiful and as prominent as it is. And we know what it represents. That right there, that thing can't save you. But what it represents, the power of the cross, the Christ that died for us, the blood that was shed. There are more people today looking for ways to take the cross cross out of the church to take Christ out of the church and we wonder why we're still sin sick we wonder why we still hate each other we wonder why we're still bitter we wonder why there's still problem because Satan is after the sacrifice of the cross but may God help us as a church one more time to say devil you can't have it you ain't going to get it we're going to fight for it. We're going to hold on to it. We're going to preach it. We're going to sing it. We're going to shout about it. It still takes the cross. Somebody give him praise. Somebody say, not on my watch. There's five of you. One more time. Not on my watch. Come on here. Come on here. Shouldn't be a strange thing for a young couple or a child to walk in and say, what's them altars up there? What's, what is that up there? What's this represent? What's that represent? I'm here to tell you, we are in a time we need the cross. We need Christ more than we've ever needed him before. But Satan is sly. He is crafty. He'll say, only this. Only this. Only this. Understand, the Word of God gives us some strict commands in regards to this. The Bible reminds us, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin hast had no pleasure. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may be established by the second, by the which we are are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. I want to remind you, church, we ain't got to add nothing to it, and there ain't nothing to take away. It's still the cross. Satan does not mind us practicing religious routines, attending churches, taking care of the spiritual checklist, as I said. But he does not want you to take seriously the Christ of Calvary. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. That's where lives are saved and the difference is made. 1 Corinthians, Paul said it like this, 1 and 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Come on here. The world would say it's foolish. Only leave that out. Come on here. 
That's offensive, Brother Jake. That's bloody. It's gory. It's old and antiquated and outdated. Come on here. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. He is after the sacrifice of your worship. We see this in regards, and this was really the symbolism and, and typology of what is represented here. As to where he said, let's hold on to this. And Moses said, no, we're going to sacrifice. We're going to worship. We're going to give unto the Lord. When we live a life that is laid before the Lord, somebody wants to find worship like this. It is worth-ship, meaning that everything of who he is, brother Christian, it is worth so much more than who I am or what I have. I want to remind you is that we are finding a time as to where Satan is after the sacrifice of our worship. Hear, hear what I'm saying in regards to this. I thank God for modern technologies. I'm glad that when there was all the regulation we had live streaming. We had these various things we could try to do in order to present the gospel and encourage the church body. But let me tell you, I believe that we had to navigate those waters cautiously because it was a swipe of the enemy. If he can get the church out, if he can get the church set and comfortable at the home because we find that on a given day when the house of the Lord is open, there is a fight in your flesh whether or not you're going to find him worthy enough in order to be in his house, in order to worship, in order to lift him up, in order to make Make the sacrifice of your time. Come on. Brother Jake, you shouldn't be preaching to us. We're the ones here. Come on here. This flesh loves to do things that make it feel comfortable. That feel easy. Come on here. He is after the sacrifice of your worship. If you are not careful, there are things that you will leave in Egypt that will prohibit you from worshiping in the way that you need to worship. Moses said, we can't worship correctly. We can't do it right. We don't know what he will ask of us. We can't leave these things there. We've got to take it with us. Can I tell, remind the church, we need one more time a body of believers who would say, I am willing to leave everything else at the door. I am willing to put it all behind. We've come in and if we're not careful, we want to look so sophisticated. We want to look so put together. We want to do this and we want to, I know for some people it makes you nervous. If Brother Jacob spends a little bit too much time of us exhorting you to worship, be patient, wait on the Lord. Why do you do that, Brother Jake? Is it because you don't want to preach? No, I've got a notebook. I'm like Brother Torbert. I've got hundreds of things I could preach to you for the sake of preaching. But Brother Drew, here's what I know. is that hell hates it when God's people will take opportunity to wait on the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost move. Let God be God. Because what happens when we begin to worship, when we begin to enter in, when we begin to lay these things down before the Lord, I'm telling you, something supernatural begins to happen. Something significant begins to take place. Bodies can be healed. Lives restored. Souls convicted. People drawn by the Spirit. Why do you think one tactic of the enemy has been to glamorize the worship experience. Now I promised myself I wouldn't get off on some wild goose chase. And some tangent. But I believe we're in danger. When this becomes the quote unquote stage. Instead of the platform. Come on. When the move of God is diminished in our life, we will hunger after entertainment. When a move of the Holy Ghost is no longer desired, the only thing that will move the flesh is to be entertained. 
So it has to get bigger and bolder and more radical and this and that. And we got to bring in this group and we got to bring in this thing. Don't get me wrong. I love a good gospel singing. Hey Amen. I remember at six years old sitting on the pew with my papa watching Kenny Henson sing at First Assembly God in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Watching the power of God at six years old fall in that church house. There was a bomb threat that night. A bomb threat, Brother Blake. Ronnie Henson got up there. And uh, the pastor up there with them, they said, come on, we've got to evacuate. There's a bomb threat. Now, you got to understand, all of us around Popper Bluff, we're a bunch of hillbillies. So we, <clears throat> we mosey on out the door, and we're standing out there. And what's funny is we're standing right at the entryway of the door. If it was going to blow up, it would have killed us all anyway. Fire trucks were there. Police was there. I mean, it was a big to-do. They came, searched everything. Somebody called it in and, th and threatened. And so that, poli that police chief, fire chief came out. He said, you got the all clear. And I still remember Ronnie Henson said, he said, I don't know about y'all, but I want to go back in and have some church. So everybody went back in. Hey, man, bomb threatened all. People were worshiping. People were pressing in. The power of God was falling. I still remember, as I said, at six years old, watching the saints shout, hearing God being lifted up. It was not about entertainment. It was about the power of God falling in the house. Can I tell you, I love that the musicians practice. I'm glad they practice to sing. We want to sound good and glorify the Lord. But all of them know, I've told them firsthand, we will not let polish preeminence and pride stand in the way when we're up here on this platform it is to sing about a Christ that was crucified and buried but he lives again and we want to direct people to the power of God oh the sacrifice there are some you have not worshipped in a long time because Satan's got a part of those sacrifices and holding on to things in your life. Your hands are heavy. Your lips. They can gossip. They can backbite. They can criticize. But when we come in, we can barely let out you roll your eyes when Brother Jacob says, come on, one more time. Come on, lift your hands. I've got to get a running start. And you know what? Don't get Brother Jake wrong. I'm not after Pentecostal calisthenics. You hear me? Because some people, that's all they associate and attribute worship to. But that's not it. <clears throat> I believe those are byproducts of what happened when God begins to move amongst His people. Sister Laura, if you don't mind me saying, I just feel the Lord in saying this. Last few weeks, this sister has dealt with Anxiety, fear, come with me, put your arm in mine, depression, am I lying? You might have seen her up here in these altars, broken, weeping, believing the Lord to help. I'm not just talking about a style of worship, but there are times you are coming into the service and setting in your mind and in your heart, there's fear and anxiety and discouragement, depression. Come on, somebody. And if you're not careful, Satan is after your sacrifice. He is after. He will want to antagonize weigh you down, bombard you. 
He don't care if you're up there singing, Sister Laura. He don't care if you're up there singing trying to help everybody else. But if he can have you in Egypt, if he can have your sacrifice, if he can have your mind. I wish somebody was with me this morning. If he can have your heart, if he can have your attention, if he can have what's going on in your life as to where your worship is hindered. But I'm here to tell somebody, I am someone with a made up mind. I'm not going to leave someone behind in Egypt. I refuse to let a church sit by the wayside. I refuse to let there be somebody who's under a place of bondage. We're going to fight. Ain't no hoof left behind. Ain't nobody going to stay in Egypt. We're going to... We're getting out of here. We're not going to let the sacrifice stay. We're going to worship somebody. Somebody bless his name. You hear what I'm saying? There are many of you that are here in this house, your mind is ravaged, you're torn between two thoughts, two opinions, how long are you gonna halt? If God be God, let him be God. Satan, you cannot have. Know you not that I, the Lord, am high and lifted up? Know you not that I do in desire to inhabit the praise of my people? Know you not this hour that, yea, I and I alone am able to heal, able to restore, able to renew thee? Yea, look not to the right nor to the left. Set thine heart, set thine affection, set thy thoughts upon me this hour. For yea, if thou wilt look unto me, I will be thy help. I will be thy strength of thy right hand. I will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Trust me this hour and know that I, the Lord, am able to sustain thee, saith the Lord. Come on, church, everybody to your feet. Everybody to your feet. Brother Danny, Sister Carolyn, would you come? I got more I could preach, but I'm here to tell you God is desiring to challenge us as a body. We've got to protect. We've got to fight. We've got to resolve. There's not one thing we're going to leave behind in Egypt. Ain't one thing we're going to leave behind. Ain't one thing we're going to compromise. Lord, I'm going to give it to you. Lord, I'm going to let you have it. Come on. Come on, church. Just worship. Come on, Holy Ghost is dealing. Holy Ghost is dealing. I surrender in my own. Oh yes, come on. Come on, some of you need in this altar right now. Some of you need to be here right now. Come on, some of you need to say, "I'm not going to leave it in Egypt." Satan might be after my sacrifice. 